You're here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I'm actually from Thomson Reuters, but I was a uh, full-time employee consultant for Boeing and Ingelheim involved in the uh, yeah, thank you. Involved in the defi uh, defining design, uh, testing, data curation uh, for the Transmart at Boehringer Ingelheim and other people I wanted to acknowledge are uh, Eugene Rachmatulin, Alex Ishkin, and Sirimon from our side, whom many of you know. And from BI side, it's uh, Yirong Wang and Will Logging. Uh, and so, yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, smart abbreviations there, and uh, we named this uh, workflow-based uh, Transmart plugin uh, BSmart, uh, so yeah, no pun intended. Uh, uh, so as you probably know, uh, there are basically two types of uh, users uh, who are using uh, Transmart. One is hardcore bioinformaticians, computational biologists, uh, and another uh, just regular biologists and scientists, right? Uh, and so we had a pilot project uh, at BI in 2012 uh, where we curated 12 um, uh, immunology data sets that was for the BI uh, inflammation and immunology group. And so they had a chance to explore it and they said that it's a, you know, Transmart is a beautiful platform that allows you to generate all this research hypothesis uh, by studying the correlations between uh, genetic and phenotypic data. Uh, yeah, but in spite of all its beauty, it's a little bit hard to understand. Uh, <laughs> so they raised some concerns and uh, asked us if, if we can develop something to you know, help address those issues. Uh, so the main issue that they have is they wanted the ability to work with uh, across several data sets at the same time, right? So as you know, Transmart uh, works just with one data set at a time, right? And so uh, we were able to overcome that uh, and that's, I, I consider that a major uh, breakthrough in Transmart, but there are also other issues that were identified. So you know, thinking it's not exactly user-friendly, so we basically created this a three-step workflow uh, yeah, that allows them, that precludes the wrong choices that they can make. Obviously, uh, the steps were not very easy to remember. They would do it real fast after initial training, but let's say uh, that was there actually uh, phrasing that, you know, we come back in six months, we try to do it again, and, you know, we don't remember anything. So we incorporated some help hints and saved workflows for that purpose. Uh, obviously, drag and drop is very powerful for cohort selection and provides a lot of freedom. Uh, but sometimes, you know, when you have too much choice, it's actually uh, hard to choose things and it becomes frustrating. So again, they wanted some sort of check boxes and radio button interface, again, to preclude the wrong choices. And obviously, everybody else, I mean, everybody likes cartoons, right? And Transmart has no interactive uh, visualization at all. So we did some uh, interactive visualization designs for them, and we simplified the Excel export. Uh, all right, so the uh, data uh, curation is the same, right? We start with the raw data to load the studies, do all this pre-processing and normalization. Uh, the ontologies are really crucial here when you're working uh, with multiple studies at the same time, right? Because, uh, you know, that allows them to, you know, be matched, right? So, for example, if there is some, you know, some diabetic nephropathy study, right, and uh, one parameter named in one study would be like percent of glomerular sclerosis and another glomerular sclerosis percent, then obviously you won't be able uh, to match these two studies based on uh, the, uh, that parameter. Uh, so it all had to be standardized, uh, you know, to use all that unified terminology. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, BI scientists, they basically proposed this uh, seven questions that they want to get answer uh, to and uh, yeah, basically, but the interface, and you'll see how it looks a little bit later. 
Uh, so some technical details, uh, it was implemented using the same uh, Groovy Grails uh, technology as our original Transmart, so it basically goes on top of Transmart. Uh, this collapsible accordion style for workflows, again, you'll see how it looks later. For the interactivity, we use JavaScript D3 libraries. Uh, obviously, we cannot build a software and you know not connect it to Metacore pathways, so there is a link there. Then uh, yes, the content-based help and preview to make it easier for users to understand the analysis process. Again, workflows can be saved, saved for future analysis and uh, results exported easily into Excel and PDF. Uh, so these are the same workflows that uh, they uh, came up with, uh, but they basically come down to uh, two use cases. One is you start with the known genes of interest, basically with some sort of gene list or gene signature. Uh, you load that and you want to explore expression patterns of those genes depending on different clinical parameters. And the second use case, you basically uh, you don't know anything, you just start with a data set or several data sets and you want the workflow to, you know, generate the best gene signature that would discriminate between two, co two cohorts. For example, disease and control, responder, non-responder, maybe some doses, etc. So that pretty much summarizes this uh, seven workflows. Um, we had to use a lot of uh, flow charts to actually understand what kind of output they want to see. For example, if you start with gene signature and uh, one data set and no parameters, how visualization would look like. If you then you know, select a categorical parameter or numerical parameter, how it would look like for one data set. Then if you choose several uh, data sets, uh, uh, how would that change the visualization with, with parameter or without parameter? And then obviously if you, you know, your gene signature is just a couple of genes, uh, obviously you cannot build too good of a heat map for two genes. So then it's some sort of box plots there. Um, so this is how the interface looks like. So it's, it's basically like a extra tab in the, you know, Transmart, right? Uh, this is this uh, accordion style workflow selection. So then the first step is open. It, look, it allows you to select those uh, seven workflows. If you click next, then this would fold and the next step would open. Uh, this, this is the customized saved workflow that you can select. You know, if you click on this, uh, uh, you will see other workflows that can also be deleted from there. This is this uh, help hints uh, window, right, to uh, help remember. <laughs> what to do and the preview showing what uh, choices were made during each step and then you basically save that as a custom workflow. Uh, so once you selected the workflow, you click next, go to the second step. Uh, this is where you either select your genes of interest. So it can be either the you know, gene signature from the Transmart already saved or you can just type uh, any gene and you know, Add it there and it can just pile up like that and then you can remove it if you want. Uh, and if you, yeah, or you can just work with a data set, right? So that's just a checkbox switch. So then you click next to go to the third step. This is where you uh, select the database of interest. So there's like a filter uh, to select if you want to work with animal data sets, clinical or cellular. There's this lookup window uh, to type for a, uh, you know, some text to find, to enable you find the data set faster. Uh, so when you click on it, it gets selected uh, and sh the selection is showed here. You can remove data set if, if it's the wrong one. There's this uh, information icon, you click on it and it opens the metadata about the data set. And then uh, one, again, once you select the data set, it shows uh, clinical parameters uh, annotated for that data set. And so if it's two or more data sets, it only shows common parameters that are, you know, com again, common between those several data sets, right? So again, that's why the uh, ontology and all this uh, vocabulary is very important here. Uh, so once you've done all your selections, you click next and it starts the analysis. So here is how the result page looks like. 
this is the heat map, right? It, uh, this top panel labels the uh, different uh, groups within the data set. Uh, so, yeah. Then uh, if you click on one cell, it will show this kind of statistics for, uh, you know, a gene uh, per sample, right? Uh, and show minimum, maximum, and median value. And then you can select it as a square like that, and then th this table will be updated. And then you can actually move that square around and it will ch change this table. So that's the interactive part of it. And whatever selection you make, again, it will be shown on a table, and then you can save it as a signature in uh, Transmart. Uh, you can export the results either as an uh, Excel file with all the detailed gene information or this picture as a PDF file. And again, the workflow can be saved, and you can, you know, when you click Finish, you go back to the first step where you can select that custom workflow again in six months. Uh, and yeah, for whatever gene you have selected, you click this uh, run enrichment button and it, uh, you know, launches this uh, enrichment analysis, basically using the uh, MetaCore Thomson Reuters pathways. Uh, it's showing, yeah, pathways for your selected gene signature. And yeah, if you click on any pathway of choice, it, it shows our uh, signaling pathway maps, right? And again, for those who don't, who don't know, the each, Icon shapes represent different protein types, and then everything is color coded. Or interactions the effect is color coded, and then you see these mechanisms in, in these hexagons in there, and it's all interactive. Uh, all right, uh, so uh, that was just the uh, interface, how it looks, and uh, this is the actual use case. Uh, so we chose uh, one psoriasis study. Uh, they, they did a study on uh, patients. They took lesional and non-lesional skin, right? And so the first question we had would be, you know, if, it, if uh, the uh, workflow can, you know, generate a signature that best distinguishes between lesional and non-lesional skin, right? So this is obviously the result. You see that there's a number of genes that are upregulated and lesional and downregulated in non-lesional and the other way around. Uh, so we also wanted, you know, if you do this analysis slightly with slightly different protocols, it always gives you slightly different results from the paper. So we wanted to compare it uh, to the paper. And basically, if you look at the top 50 genes discovered by this BSMART, it's Basically, 56 of it were in the top 50 uh, in the paper. And then top 100 genes discovered by Bismarck, they contain 78% genes that were mentioned in the paper. So that was a uh, pretty good agreement with the published results. Uh, now, the next question we had is actually to see how it, the signature performs in other uh, studies. So we picked uh, two more studies that have uh, patients with uh, lesional and non-lesional skin. Uh, so the second psoriasis study it comes from the same lab, and you can see that, you know, for this initial study from which the signature was derived, this Suarez study, right, there's this real nice pattern separation, and the pattern stays pretty much the same in the uh, different psoriasis study, well, except maybe for these genes, which expression is not very clear. But then if you look at the scleroderma patients, uh, again, lesional versus non-lesional skin, uh, the, the, there is no pattern at all, right? It's totally random. And then if you look just uh, at the scleroderma patients alone, you can you know, see that there's yeah, basically no pattern. Uh, the signature has no pattern, which, you know, again, if you compare to the way expression pattern how it looks here, right, which is clear and basically random noise uh, in scleroderma. So it, this just suggests that scleroderma perhaps has other uh, pathology mechanisms, right, or maybe something's wrong with the data set. So we can, just by looking at the data, come to some conclusions about even the data set quality, actually. Uh, and um, so this was analysis of the, you know, skin expression. And uh, the last uh, study we did, we wanted to see how the signature derived from psoriasis, lesional, non-lesional skin, if it has any expression pattern in other tissue types. So we got this uh, 
ulcer ulcerative colitis study with intestinal uh, epithelium, right? And so again, it's the same signature from that psoriasis, psoriasis suarez study. And uh, again, it, it was a very nice study. It has the active ulcerative colitis samples control, then uh, non-active samples basically, uh, which don't, do not have any lesions, uh, and then the ulcerative colitis with remission. And so again, uh, some genes that were overexpressed on lesional skin were also overexpressed in the uh, ulcerative colitis actus, uh, active uh, patients. Uh, and again, the ones that were overexpressed in control were also, in, I mean, in psoriasis skin were overexpressed in the uh, ulcerative colitis control. Uh, Non-active uh, ulcerative colitis uh, samples were pretty much uh, like control, which is good. And then you can see that these genes in uh, remission uh, samples, they actually somewhere in between, between the uh, active colitis and the control, right? So basically it, it, it's in good agreement that, you know, although there is no more disease, but it's, it's not exactly normal either, right? Uh, so this analysis was done pretty, you know, fairly quickly within an hour, right? We just went through all these several data sets, uh, played around and just generated that very nice signature from this. Uh, so uh, uh, to summarize, uh, at, in Bsmart at Boringer Ingelheim, there are about over 100 curated data sets. Uh, a lot of it public, some private data sets, uh, both from gene expression and uh, there's NGS data loaded in there. Uh, Again, this is a very nice framework that can be used to create other workflows. Uh, the system is designed for like biologists, right, lab scientists, uh, and you know, just for them to play around, discover any patterns, you know, and then if they have any questions about what they discover, they go then to the statisticians and computational biologists for you know in-depth confirmation of their findings. Obviously. Transmart 1.2 has been released and we already have uh, upgraded uh, Bsmart to the 1.2 version. So some modifications were done there. And yeah. So this is a uh, computational biology group from Boringer Ingelheim. This is Yirong Wang and Thomson Reuters. We don't have a picture, but you know, you can meet us live here. So thank you. Hi. Um, do you have any plans to do this type of workflow for, say, proteomics or metabolomics in the future? Proteomics, metabolomics. I mean, well, the yeah. workflow doesn't really depend, depend on data type. It's if, if you are able to load it into Transmart, then it, it can run on that. Okay. And just one other question: um, Does your heat map rescale if you have a lot of genes? It, Yes, it, it, yeah, it, yeah, they all change and sometimes, you know, when you yeah, do several data sets at the same time, depending on the settings, right, well, actually, if you haven't selected any parameters, then it would just show the heat map, so sort of merged for all the data sets, yeah, and you can see them all at once. It's just there, there was a request to also see individual expression and then the fold changes, so it was hard to reconcile, so, yeah. Hi. Uh can you elaborate a little bit more on how you enable the cross-study analysis? Cross-study? Um, yeah, it basically uses the uh, z-scores, right? That's, you know, tra uh, Transmart calculates the z-scores and that basically normalizes the data set. And so that what allows you cross-study comparison because they all, you know, centered, right? And the deviation is standardized. So that's what enables the comparison. Okay. So do you think you can have uh, normalized Well, yes, but that's how it is. When you load data in Transmart, right, it's, you know, uh, the process data, they are locked to normalized. 
you know, signals, right? But then Transmart converts it into Z scores, and you know, even you know, Transmart results you see them in Z scores. Ah, yeah, it's all normalized, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for a nice presentation. A couple of, of detailed questions about your uh, implementation. It, when it comes to the workflows that are implemented, are those? In, can you ex expand those and add new workflows without changing the underlying code base, or is that is it configurable, or is it codable and extensible? Well, yeah, and that's that's what it says that you know can be uh, more different workflows can be created on the same. Framework, yeah. So, you're, but you would write code to do that, or you would be able. Yeah, to, you have to write not a a, data extra code. Yeah, some maybe slight modifications, because it's also yeah. You have to maybe change our scripts and then change the visualization. So, yeah. yeah, so it's it's through the, yeah, you through have the to yeah do some code additions. And I guess the other the other question is is this something you you mentioned you'll be porting it to one point two? Is all of the uh, capability well, that you've created uh, yeah, available but, <laughs> as open source. There are plans to, you know, release it to the community, but you know, it might take some time. It might take some. Time. <laughs> Thank you. So, and it's for BI to decide. 